Dr. Sunny Andrews here, Eva Jen Elite Athlete, and today we're going to film episode two of The Road to the Arnold. And I'm going to be training hamstrings today at The Pit. It's an awesome gym, and it's going to be pretty exclusive. Hopefully you guys will be able to hear me better this time because there won't be as loud of music as the last gym we trained in, um, so I can give a little bit better of an explanation of all of the form I use, tempo, reps and sets and stuff like that. So come on, let's go. Access grip. Train hamstrings today. Hamstrings have been a body part of mine that I've been trying to bring up for a long time. I'm a runner and a soccer player, so hamstrings aren't really that athletic of a muscle group. They're more aesthetic, so they don't really bulge out unless you target them specifically. So I've been trying really hard to isolate my hamstrings and get them to have more definition and a lot more projection than they previously had. Usually, when I do lifts like deadlifts, and squats and everything, I put all my emphasis, even lying hamstring curls, I put all my emphasis on my glutes, and I'm really good at engaging my glutes, but not so much my hamstrings. So I've been really working on it, and I'll show you guys some tips and tricks I have for growing your hamstrings. Let's get to work. Alright, so a great tip for when you're doing lying hamstring curls is to really push your pelvis into the into the pad so that you're not hinging from your glutes, you're not engaging the glutes um, and cheating. So for me, if I have someone who's pressing on my lower back, that helps a lot. But um, if you don't have that, which I don't obviously um, right now, <laughs> the best thing to do is just to consciously be pushing your pelvis into the pad so that you're really just isolating your hamstrings. Another thing that's really important with lying hamstring curls is your dorsiflexion or your plantar flexion. Basically, that just means if you're, if you're flexing your foot up or if you're pointing your toes down. That'll make a difference with if you're using your biceps femoris or your semi-tendinosis, which is like your lateral versus your medial hamstring muscles because there's three muscles that make up your hamstrings. I'm sure when you see people who are really lean, you usually see two, but there's one that lies beneath the semi-tendinosis, which is the semi-membranosis, and that's more medial and deep to the semi-tendinosis.
I forgot to mention, my waist trainer is Squeeze Me Skinny. It is my absolute favorite brand because of the quality. Diffled deadlifts are sometimes glute dominant if you bend your knees and turn it into a Romanian deadlift. But what's really important to do if you're trying to target your hamstrings is to keep your legs not locked out, but a little bit more straight. That's why they're called stiff leg deadlifts. A tip that will help you really engage your hamstrings is to put something as much as a half an inch to an inch underneath your toes when you're doing the deadlift. And I use a plate, I just used a mat that was in the gym, which was a perfect height. And it really gets you to have that extra stretch in your hamstrings so you feel it in your hamstrings and you're not really pulling so much from your glutes. So. That helps me a lot to help engage my hamstrings with stiff leg dumbbell deadlifts. So for stiff leg deadlifts, I do four sets. I started with 12 reps at 80% of my RPE and then I did 15 reps with 80% RPE and then I went up in weight and did 90% at 15 reps and then my last set was 20 reps with 90% RPE which means my rep perceived exertion which is like 100% would be the 100% max which would be like the heaviest I could do for one rep. The glute hamstring raise is a half dome piece of machine, piece of equipment. <laughs> and when you're going down on the eccentric movement, it should be at least five seconds long. So you're really getting a long stretch in your hamstrings and there's a lot of time under tension. Another good exercise to do if you don't have that machine is to either do Nordic drops or you have someone hold your ankles while you go down forward with your, your, your sitting in your knee position with your feet backwards like a backwards L and then you go forward. Um, other people, if you don't have a gym partner, another good way to do that is to load a barbell and with 25s, if you use 45s, it's, the bar is too far off the ground, so you load it with 25s and then you put your feet underneath there and you put a, have a mat and you push yourself forward. Ideally, you don't want to have to use your hands at all, but if you need to when you get to the ground, uh, so you don't face plant, you can push yourself back up. So those are good exercises. Oh, and another tip, if you want to have a little extra assistance when you're doing a Nordic drop or a glute hamstring raise is to use resistance bands. With the glute hamstring raise, if you have the machine, you can put one around your neck and put it around bands at the bottom and that way when you come back up you still even have resistance. And then with the Nordic drop, if you have a long resistance band, not like one of those loop ones, and you have it attached to something in front of you, you can hold on to it so that when you get to the bottom, instead of having to push yourself up, you can use the resistance band and that way it's not 100% effort with your hands when you're pushing back up.
single leg hamstring curls standing are a really good exercise because you can really isolate each of your hamstrings and single leg exercises no matter what they are are really good for addressing any type of asymmetry my suggestion is always start with the leg that's weaker because you're gonna always be a little bit more tired so you don't you want to give that weaker smaller limb whether it's your arms or legs a little more love and attention so you start with that one try and get in as many reps as you can so if you do like 15 reps on your weak side and then you can get 12 on your other side that's perfectly okay I mean ideally everyone wants to be able to do the same amount of weight same amount of reps and be symmetrical and that's your goal but to try and correct it start with the weaker side So not all gyms have the standing leg hamstring curl machine, like this one just didn't, which is totally fine because you can improvise. I either use the cable machine and put a, a strap around my ankle, and I always think of that yin yang song when I hear that, but anyways, I put that strap <laughs> around my ankle and then um, do um, a hamstring curl with my foot going up and down and a little bit of a forward motion, so it's almost like riding a skateboard or a bike when you use it with the cables. And, or what I did, I used a leg extension machine and I put my one leg on the pad and then I work with the other leg going up and down. So you don't need that machine. finished off with my ab routine. I only train abs once a week right now because I'm trying to keep my waist snatched and small so I don't want to have too much hypertrophy. I'm only six weeks out right now so I'm not trying to build any ab muscle but I'm trying to maintain some definition and that is why I'm doing a minimum of 20 reps with my two ab exercises. I did my favorite uh, ha hanging ab raises and then I did these new exercises that I've just incorporated which are the side planks with a leg abduction. You'll also feel those in your glute medius which you should because you're using an abduction motion with your leg while you're coming in and scooping with the arm that's with the abducted leg, same arm same leg and you kind of go around your side when you come down. Some tips about the hanging ab, hanging ab raises, hanging leg raises is that you should not be moving from your hip flexors. You have to be hinging from, you should be hinging from your pelvis so that the seam of your, if you have a mirror in front of you, you should see the seam, this is kind of weird, but you should see the seam of your pants in the mirror. So you're kind of like going up like that. Because if you're just moving from your legs, it's no longer an ab exercise and you're just gonna feel it in your hip flexors. And it defeats the whole purpose. So a lot of controlled movements, really focus on your breathing, and you wanna make sure that you feel a burn and your abs should be flexing. You should be able to visibly see your abs working when you're training your abs. That's the whole point.
All right, so that's it for my hamster today, episode two of Road to the Arnold. There's so much more that goes into a prep than obviously just training, but if you don't get your training 100%, then you're really missing out on a lot of your gains, obviously. But now we're gonna go to the grocery store and I'm gonna start doing some more cooking and meal prep stuff. Even though I love my meal sponsor, Long Life Meal Prep, you guys should totally try them. I am a chef at heart. I come from a long line, I'm sure I've said this many times, of chefs because I'm Greek, so I'm gonna do some more cooking. But anyways, enough about that. That was my hamstring day, a little bit abs, and thank you guys so much for watching. Comment below what you guys want to see more of. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and look out for episode two, and then three, four, five, six of the road to the Arnold. Hi. I also wanted to give a quick thank you to the pit for allowing us to shoot there today. Great gym, lots of great equipment, and it was very seclusive.